So hello. How y'all doing today? Morning, Will. <laughs> I see your chat. Your chat. <laughs> I'm doing okay. I uh, want a little bit of a break. But... Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you're able to hop on. That's great. And, and I believe this was for the, the offer. Or was this for the command? This one is for the, an offer. So, okay. um, yep, absolutely. Um, I'm going to start doing just last minute impromptu Zooms more often <laughs> of random things that I think would be helpful. <laughs> we'll just be doing a lot more just Zooms, you know. Or in person, just for the okay. things that might be helpful. Everything helps. <laughs> Everything helps, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, so kind of what we'll be doing today is I'm just going to write an offer. Okay, and just as a demonstration, um, I know some of you have been practicing, but the reason I thought of doing this is it seems like it's really hard. Um, a lot of people aren't practicing. And the thing that worries me about that is I just want you to feel as comfortable as possible with this. And I don't want you to put yourself in a situation where you're, you know, in a, you don't have enough time to do it. You're stressed out, you know rushing around when your buyer one. So we're going to really, you know, emphasize, we're emphasizing practicing and I'm just hoping to make everything easier uh, for everybody to just kind of demonstrate how you do it start to finish. Um, what we're getting into today, we will not be getting into the content of the contract. So Doug came and taught a class, you know, I guess, was it a, last week or maybe the week before where he went into each contract and, you know, what the paragraphs mean and what you fill in on each blanks. So I'm, I don't want to cover that part. Uh, we're going to just really focus today on the logistics of DocuSign and command and how you physically do it, how you get the doc, how you fill out all of the forms, how you send them to somebody from, you know, th to sign through DocuSign, how you download it later to send an offer. So both of these things are important. The content of the contract and the logistics of sending it are two super important things, but we just got to focus on one and not the other. So as we're going, if you have any questions about the contract, like about the paragraphs in the contract, what something means, what a document means, what you fill in a blank, um, just hold on to that question if it's about the content. Um, if there's any time at the end, I'll definitely, you know, be happy to answer questions about that if there's time at the end. Um, if not, we also have that contracts playlist. We have the class that Doug taught about a week or two ago where he went through the whole offer. Uh, you could send a group text to me and Alana. You could reach out to Doug or maybe there'll be some time at the end. Either way, I want to really focus today just on logistically, you know, how you actually do the writing of an offer. Um, all right. So before we even start, how's everybody feeling about how you write an offer? Like just... Let me feel confident about it. Have you done it before? Just to get a little feedback of where we stand. <laughs> Hannah's nodding her head no, but she did a wonderful job on her first try, so I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> and I know Kim's tried before. Anybody else attempt an offer before? you're on mute, I can't hear you. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to let a couple more people in. Okay. All right, I'm going to share my screen and we will uh, get started here. Let me find the correct screen. That's the problem. I always have 52 tabs open and I'm never on the correct one. Um, hmm. Okay, it's this one. There we go. Okay, um, if you have a question, 
at any point just about how we're doing this, just unmute yourself and, you know, just speak up. We don't have that many people in here that it's going to make, a, you know, we have to raise hands or anything like that. Okay. So can you guys see my screen all right? And you're seeing Bugs Bunny. Is that what you're seeing? Bugs Bunny's contact and command. Okay, <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So when I want to write an offer, I'm going to start in command. All right. And I start in command with a contact. So Bugs Bunny here, we're just going to pretend Bugs is a buyer that I met at an open house. Um, I put my personal Gmail in here just so that as we're doing this demonstration, I can sign I can sign things so that you can see how it works. I wanted to use a real email address. And I would suggest for you that you do the same thing when you practice. So either put a fake cartoon character in there if you want, if you want to have, you know, just to practice or practice with put yourself in there, put me in there. Um, you know, you need some fake contacts in there or some people who aren't actually buying and selling just to practice on. And it's totally fine to just practice on them, make documents, make do things in DocuSign. We want you to do that. You're not going to break anything and we really want you to do it. All right, so Bugs is here in command. So that would be your first step if you were going to write an offer is to put that person in command. Uh, the next thing I have to do is create an opportunity. And I do that by clicking on opportunities. I click, oops, sorry, I didn't want to do that. I click create opportunity and I'm going to choose. So Bugs here is a buyer. Okay. And um, I don't have to enter anything in, in the close date or the budget or the commission rate if I don't want to. It's really for planning purposes. So if you do enter in an estimated close date, and if you do enter in a time frame. Uh, uh, the advantage to you is that it will be tracking things in your pipeline. You're going to see it in opportunities. So there's some planning advantage, but it doesn't, you know, commit you to anything. And so normally I'm doing this step of creating an opportunity when I first talk to somebody who says they have an interest in buying or selling real estate in the next year. Okay. So pretend I met bugs at an open house. Okay. After the open house, they put them in command, okay? Because that's what you should do is put it in right away. And then maybe later I scheduled an appointment and then we um, we sat down for a buyer consultation and Bugs has already signed a buyer agency agreement. So pretend all that has happened just for time purposes. I'm just going to kind of fast forward in future. Okay, so now I have this opportunity here for Bugs Bunny. Um, to get into my documents, I'm going to click on that to open the opportunity and I click on documents. Now, this is the place where you're going to store all of your documents. It's also when you're going to get paid, this is how your documents get reviewed by somebody to make sure that you've uh, got all your signatures in place, you're not missing any documents. From, someone from compliance reviews your documents. That protects you to make sure that everything's good. Uh, so these will be stored here. And I'll tell you, it's really handy when, you know, five years after a transaction, somebody reaches out to you and wants a copy of their, you know, inspection report or something. You have it at your fingertips really easy to get to. So that's what this screen is for. But to get those documents, I have to use DocuSign. So the very, very first thing I'm going to do when I have a transaction is I'll click start a transaction. And what that does is that tells command to open up DocuSign and create a room. So in DocuSign, we have these rooms there. It's kind of like a folder. I'm going to create a room for that contact that already has some documents in it. Okay, so we said Bugs Bunny was a buyer. So here's my buyer, Bugs Bunny buyer, right? And it because I said it was a buyer, some of my documents that I'm going to need are already in here. Now, not every single thing that I need is automatically going to be in here. There might be... Um, other things that I need, depending on the buyer. For example, you'll notice that none of the financing documents are in here. Okay, we don't know what type of finance. They might have FHA financing, might be conventional, might be VA. Um, so we're going to need to add some documents into the room. What I'm going to recommend you do when you're trying to figure out which documents you need is on our website, we have a checklist of documents. Okay, and if I go into the resource library and go down to buyer and listing contracts, there's this buyer checklist. Um, I recently redid the buyer checklist to kind of move 
um, some things around. Um, these documents at the top are ones that the buyer is going to sign first. Okay, so these are the documents that I'm gonna need in my DocuSign room. These one that say addenda supplied by the seller, you're going to get that after they've chosen a house and you download them from Bright MLS. So the seller will have already signed these and you're gonna download them from Bright MLS. These are ones that you start out with. You won't need every single document for every single buyer. The ones that are in bold are the ones that are usually required. And then the other ones might be used some, sometimes and sometimes not. Okay, so for bugs, we're gonna pretend I had a pre-approval letter because he's fake, I don't actually have one. We're going to do a residential contract of sale. We're going to need a financing addendum. Okay, seller contribution. I'm going to use that when the lender has told me that that buyer needs a seller contribution. That the, the lender will tell me they need $5,000 or something like that. Um, we, we might also have a seller contribution sometimes when I'm writing an offer and there are some, um, maybe I know there's going to be some repairs. And so even if the buyer doesn't need it, maybe I'm going to ask for it. So in some situations, you're going to ask for a seller contribution. Most of the time you have property inspections, you're going to need general addendum to the contract of sale. Dual agency, we're only going to need if the uh, buyer and listing, you know, for they're both with Keller Williams Legacy. And then we have some inspection things we might need. All right, so I'm going to start pulling the documents in that I need. That's the first thing I usually do is grab all the documents I'm going to need. So we uh, for bugs, I'm going to need a contract of sale. I'm going to need financing. I'm going to need inspections. And I'm going to need general addendum. Okay, so when if I were doing this and we were sitting down at a table together, I would be printing this sheet out. And what I would be having you do is crossing off the ones you don't need or highlighting the ones you do need or something to just indicate so that you know what you need ahead of time. And I, I think that's a great idea for you to do yourself is just go and print out a few of these so that when you're ready to go, you can, you're, you can just start using this. All right, so let's start grabbing the documents that we need. Okay, so I saw it. We know we need residential contract to sale and that's already here, okay? Um, the next thing that we said that we needed on our checklist, oops, wrong one, is the financing addendum. And that's not in here. So we're going to add that. So I'm going to go to this add button and then go down to DocuSign forms. Now, when I'm looking at the forms, most of the times you should be using one of these packets. The packets have in them the most commonly used documents. And most of the time, your document's going to be there already. You don't have to do anything else. If you can't, if you need a form that's not in there, then you'll start looking in these libraries for the form you want. Most likely it's going to be in either GBBR, MAR, or the KW960. That's just our personal documents. So let's see what we got. So we said I want a buyer contract to sale and I need the type of financing was the one I said I needed. So let's just pretend that Bugs is using conventional financing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add that in. Okay, so see, now I have that document in there. Um, now, in this case, I'm doing it one at a time, just kind of to show you. But in the real world, I would recommend that you just, if you need two documents, you might as well just download them both at once. But we're just kind of going slower just to, you know, go through everything. Okay, so we got financing addendum. I already said I don't need a seller contribution for Doug. I mean, for <laughs> bugs. <laughs> I am going to need the property inspections addendum and general addendum. I'll need those two. So let's see if we have them. All right, there's no property inspections in here, but there is a general addendum. So let's do the same step again. I'm gonna to go to add DocuSign forms. And I said, I was gonna look in this contract to sale is where I usually find things and there's property inspections addendum and I add it. Okay, um, sometimes I, um, there are file, file documents in here that I don't really need, you know, or maybe I accidentally download something and then realize I don't need it. I download FHA and then find out, oh no, it's conventional, okay? So if I have a document in here that I don't need, I'm just gonna check the checkbox next to it and I have a choice. I can either delete it, which deletes it permanently. I can always get it again if I want to, um, or I can archive, which puts it, just takes it out of this room, but I can still get it back if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one just so you can see. It's easy to remove it. Okay, so I downloaded the documents that I'm going to need that the 
buyer signs first. But we said that there's also a whole bunch of disclosures that the seller signs first. All right, so where do we get those? So what I'm going to do to get those is go to the listing. And I've already picked a listing um, to use um, because when you're practicing, I want you to be able to just go on bright and just choose any random house. It doesn't matter which one you pick to practice. And actually I would recommend that you just try a lot of different houses when you're practicing. Do one in Baltimore County, then one in Baltimore City, and then one in Carroll County or whatever counties you might work in, you know, do that. Do some with have a well, do a property with a ground rent, do an HOA, do a condo, like try to get some variety in the houses you're doing because you will see different documents. The way you get the documents is this button right here that says bright dash documents. It's not really obvious. It's such a tiny little button for something so important. I don't think it's clear, you know, it's not intuitive that that's what it is, but that's where I get whatever documents are available for that property. If you're practicing and you choose a listing and it doesn't have these documents, just practice with a different one. In the real world, if somebody wanted to write an offer and that property didn't have any documents, you'd have to ask the listing agent for them. So there's no point in us doing that just for practicing. All right, so I'm gonna click this button, Bright Documents. Let's see what we have. Oh, it looks like it's been a little minute since I logged in, it's making me log in. All right, let's try this again. So I'm gonna click this Documents button. Here we go. Right, so in this case, there's only one document to download. Sometimes you'll see more. Sometimes there'll be the disclosures and then there might also be maybe a floor plan or a receipt from something or you know, just some other general information could be uploaded. In this case, we just have the disclosure. So I'm clicking on that. It opens it up. Okay, I can see that it's 16 pages long. Okay, so there's a lot there. And I'm just going to click download and that's downloading it onto my desktop. Now my practice is to change this name before I download it. And the reason I do that is it just gives it this random bunch of letters and later I can't figure that what out what that is. So um, I'm just gonna call it disclosures because honestly, I can't remember the name of the property anymore. <laughs> but usually what I would do in this case is do disclosures and then I would put the street that the property was on. Um, I didn't pay much attention since this is a fake offer and I wasn't, didn't really care about it. Okay, so I downloaded those disclosures and now I'm going to go to DocuSign and upload them into this room. So I'm going to go back to that same add button, but instead of choosing DocuSign forms, now I'm getting them on my computer and I need to look on my desktop was where it was saved. My Zoom stuff's in my way. Okay, disclosures and open. Okay, so now the disclosures have been uploaded to this room as well. Um, and you can see that this is a red PDF. So here's the trick to noticing everything in this DocuSign room. So first of all, I'm using list view. That's my personal preference. If you might be seeing grid view that looks like this, do whichever one you like. It doesn't matter. Um, and I wanted to show you that things that are blue are forms. And what that means is that's a form that's meant for you to be able to use over and over and over again. For example, if I'm if I'm out looking for houses with bugs, maybe he writes an offer on the house that we're about to write. Maybe it doesn't get accepted. We have to go out again, look for some more houses, write another offer. I can keep reusing these forms over and over again. Each time when they get signed, they'll generate a PDF instead of a form. So just think of those forms as being reused over and over again. A PDF that is read is one that I have not used DocuSign on yet. It might have signatures on it that somebody sent to me, but I haven't just signed it with DocuSign. It's just a plain old PDF. One that's green will come right from DocuSign. We're going to see that in a second. Okay, so now I've gathered the documents that I need. So the first step is look at my checklist, figure out what documents I'm gonna need, and then get them all into the room. And now the next thing I do is I start filling things out. So I'm gonna open up the residential contract of sale, and I'm just going to start filling it out. Um, I have multiple tabs open while I'm doing this, and I would recommend that you do that because you're going to need to be looking at this listing. 
while you're filling it out. You're definitely coming back here. Okay, it's 1817 Wycliffe Road is my address, right? So it's good for me to remember. So I just start filling it out. Date of offer today, the seller. Uh, okay, I don't know the seller's name, right? So now I need to go find that. There's a couple ways you could look at the seller's name. One way is I can look at the tax record. I clicked that link that shows me the tax record. Oh, it's saying my URL is old. It doesn't like that I logged out. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to log back in. 1817, let me get back in here. Right. Uh, my second way, let me get this listing back here, was 1817, uh, Wycliffe is the name, okay. So here's my listing, okay, good. I can click on this blue link to see the tax record. Okay, and that shows a name right here. I always confirm that though, because sometimes the name will be different than what's shown on the tax record. And that could be the case if the person is deceased and their heirs are selling the house. It could be the case if there has been a recent transfer, like maybe somebody bought it, renovated in a couple of months and is selling it again. And maybe this just hasn't been updated yet. There's a couple of reasons it could not be correct. So I'm gonna look at the disclosures that they sent and just see, yep, see, look, it's her name. That's who's signing is that same person, okay? So they use the same name as this here on Bright. So there, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. So I'm just, I like to have the thing open so I can copy and paste when I do everything, but you could type it again too. So I'm going to put her name right there as the seller, okay? And then we said that the address was this 18 Wycliffe Road. Okay, so I'm going to come back here and put that in. Okay, located in Parkville. Okay, now, I, okay, I'm not going to do every single line in here and fill it out completely because you kind of get the idea that I'm just kind of going through and filling in all of the spots. Okay, so 300. Okay, so I'll just fill in all of the blanks that need to be filled in. I'll check all of the check boxes that need to be checked. Um, Barbara, I see you're raising your hand. Go ahead and un unmute yourself. Yes, a question. Is there anywhere is there anywhere in DocuSign where we could um, like fill most of the information in and then it would actually put it in for us? So on each here's form? that's a good question. Thank you, Barbara. So when in DocuSign, it already is going to bring in the buyer's information already. Okay, so you can see I didn't have to type Bugs Bunny that came in already. Okay. And on my buyer agreement, the email address for Bugs, their phone number, all that's going to come in. Great. Um, secondly, when I put in the address in one place, it's going to go in others as well. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So for the most part, when you a lot of things that you fill in automatically are going to go a lot of other places. But there's so much to the offer that's only in one spot that my recommendation to you is that you carefully go through every single line, okay? okay. Really yeah. carefully go through every single line and get every bit in, okay? Because it's Thanks. so easy to mess up. Thank you for asking that. Thanks. Okay, so pretend that I filled this whole thing out, okay? I'm not gonna do it right now in the interest of time, but that's what I would do next. I would fill in all the blanks there and then I would hit save and close. And I'm going to do that for each of these documents and just see what I need to fill in. You notice I'm not trying to sign anything yet. Okay, right now, I'm just filling in the blanks in advance to just make it easier for myself. Okay, so I'm opening up conventional financing. Okay, so notice this. This goes back to what Barbara's great question was. So Barbara, remember, I was just in that listing agreement and I put in the seller's name and the property address. And look, I put them in one time and now they're here. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not too bad. So I'm going to just start plugging in some numbers here. 
Okay. And just pretend that I filled this whole thing out because we don't want to take the time. I don't want to take the time to just to, um, you know, do the parts you already know. <laughs> All right. So I open up conventional financing, save and close. So each one I'm opening it, filling it out, closing the document. Okay. Property inspections. Okay. Same idea. I'm going to open that one up. All right. Okay. Already has that stuff in there. I'm just filling in blanks. Um, most of these things are, you know, things that have to be signed. Okay, so pretend that I went through every single one of these documents, read it, filled in all the blanks if I needed to. So we're just going to pretend they're all filled in just so I can get to all the good DocuSign parts that you really want to know. All right, now I'm ready to get bugs to sign them. All right, so what I'm going to do is check the check boxes next to the ones that bugs needs to sign. Okay, disclosures. Uh, conventional financing. Okay. So what I've done is I've checked all these check boxes. Notice that some of these are forms, but one of them is also the disclosures that were already signed by the seller. All right. So I've checked the check boxes to the left of those. The way you ask somebody to sign something is by using this create envelope button. And the way I think of it is just imagine like you're taking these forms, you're sticking them in an envelope and mailing them off, you know, for somebody else to sign. That's sort of what we're doing. So I click create envelope. And the people who need to sign here are the buyer. OK, the agent, me, I'm also going to need to sign. The reason that my name isn't one of the choices here is that none of the blank forms need my signature. However, I know that my signature is going to be needed on some forms that are the seller disclosure. So we're gonna add me later, which I'll show you how to do right now. If there were two buyers, then I would just check both of those boxes. And now we wait. Every time I do something on Zoom, everything's slow. <laughs> Oof, this is taking a long time. There we go. All right. Okay, so this screen, this is showing me the things that I said I wanted signed, but they're in a weird order, right? I don't want them in this order. I want to start with residential contract of sale. Then I want conventional financing. Then I want property inspections. And then these. In general, the things, the disclosures that the seller has already signed, those should always be at the end. Okay. I always, I feel like this, the order of things tells a story, right? And so I want the contract of sale, the most important thing first, then all the money stuff, then the inspection stuff, and then anything else. And then the disclosures is sort of the order that I'm putting things. And this is the order that Bugs is going to see them. So that's why it's important. Um, I also want to mention something that a lot of people run into. There's a view button here, but if you click it, the blanks will not already be filled out. And a lot of people get thrown by that because they think that somehow, you know, the, the work that they did filling it out didn't work. It's not intended to show that form. So that's why it's not working. It's just doesn't do that. It's just showing a form, which I don't know why it does that, but it does. All right. So I have bugs as one of my signatures. But I also need me in there as the agent. So I'm going to hit add recipient. And then if I click that little address button, did you see what I clicked? Let me just go back because I did it too fast. This little button right here next to name that looks like an address book. If I click that, that will take me to the people who are in the transaction already, which is me. So I could just select that and could apply selected. Okay, so now I have... Um, I like this set signing order because what I want to do is I want bugs to sign first and then I want to sign. Here's my reason for doing that. If when bugs is looking through the offer, getting ready to sign it, he notices something either that I, you know, he, I misspelled, I did something wrong. I did something that we just didn't agree to. If there was a mistake I made, he might notice, or maybe he changes his mind. Maybe while he's doing it, he, he decides, oh, you know what? After all, I want to move the settlement date, or I want an additional inspection, or whatever the change is. If there's any change at all to the contract, 
it's a lot easier to do if nobody has signed yet. Once somebody signs, then I'm kind of redoing things. So I like to have my clients sign first, just in case they point out something they want to do differently. And then I sign last to speed things up. Keep scrolling down and change your email because it always comes up with a I don't know. I don't like the subject. Email subject, please DocuSign, GBBR, general addendum to contract a sale. That doesn't make any sense to have that. I would rather just have it say, please DocuSign or something else like please sign. You know, I can, I can make it say whatever I want. I put my message here, whatever it is. Hello, blah, blah, blah. Call me if you have any questions. Whatever I'm going to say, I'm going to put in that email message. All right. Now I'm on to the next step. Any questions before I move on? I'm gonna hit from the screen. Okay, so I'm hitting next. All right, and now I'm at the point where I'm working on the signatures. So let's say I'm scrolling through, I can see what I already have. Let's say I notice something. I notice I've misspelled something. I notice I left something blank, whatever it is. If you wanna make a change to anything that's in here, you're going to double click and then you'll have a blinking line where you can start typing. I'm going to give bugs a middle initial. Bugs are bunny. Okay, so I had to make a change there. The key is to double click. When you're on the other screen, you could just click once and type. Now that you're on this screen, you have to double click. All right, I'm going to start looking through. All right. And in, in real life, if I were doing this, I'd be double checking my work right now. Now we intentionally left things blank, so there's nothing for me to check, but normally I'm just making sure I got everything. All right, here's the first part where something needs to be signed. Okay, you see this at the bottom, inspections addenda attached or inspections addenda declined. I'm gonna show you the difference with another signature. Let me show you the one at the end. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Okay. In DocuSign, when something is a solid color, like this signature at the end, that means it's a required signature. That means this, my client has to sign this or DocuSign won't let it move forward. When something is like we just saw, where it's not a solid color, it had a yellow on the yellow square on the outside, yellow rectangle on the outside, but it was not solid. These are optional. And that makes sense because this is saying, are your inspections addenda attached or is it declined? You're never gonna sign both of those. You're always signing one or the other. I think, here's my opinion on how you should do this. I personally never have anything optional on here except in some really extenuating circumstances. I, I'm going to talk on the phone to my client, figure out, are we attaching inspections and make one of these required and delete the other one. And the reason I'm doing this is that when people receive this DocuSign link, it's just going to automatically scroll to the next required signature. It skips right past anything that's optional. And so what happens is that my client never reads it at all. They're never reading a single word of it. They're just clicking wherever I said to click. And so they don't even notice that there was this optional thing and it ends up being left blank. So I'm going to recommend that you don't have any optional signatures. And here's how you do it. It's not too hard. It's pretty easy. So in this case, Bugs does want an inspection. So I'm clicking on this initial that said that was optional before. And I'm checking this checkbox that says required. OK, and you can see it's a solid yellow now because now this one's required. And just to be super clear, because I don't want bugs to sign both, I'm going to click on this one. I don't want them to sign that one. And I'm just pressing the delete key on my keyboard. So now bugs can't mess this up. I want them to sign attach. I don't want them to sign declined. And he's just going to do you sign exactly how I said to do it. All right, I'm going to keep scrolling and I'm going to look for the next signature. Oh, here's another one. Okay, these are optional. I want this required. So I'm going to click it, required field. Click it, required field. Click it, required field. Okay. All right, I'm scrolling through, scrolling through. These must be left blank. All right, and now here's a signature where the buyer signs. And those are already in place. And as you go through, 
um, you're going to find, you know, most of the most of the places in the forms are already going to have a signature block. A lot of times you don't have to do anything at all. It's just set there for you. It's just more for the optional things. Okay, inspections. I don't want bugs to sign every single one of these. That's going to make it harder for our, if we're in a multiple offer situation, they might take a different offer just because bugs is asking for eight different inspections, right? So let's say bugs only want structural mechanical and maybe we want this one um, additional uh, as recommended by structural blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm just pretend I type that whole thing. Okay. So again, just like I said before, I'm not leaving anything up to my client. I'm making the ones that I want them to sign required, the ones that I don't want them to sign. Okay. I'm deleting. All right. In the interest of time, we're just going to pretend I went through every single one of these so far, and I'm just getting to the seller's disclosures. Okay, so all of those, pretend we just did that for all of them. Okay, now, now I get to the disclosures. I don't need dual agency because we are not with the same brokerage. So I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going skipping right past it. Okay, I get to the first one that my client needs to sign, Maryland Residential Property Disclosure Disclaimer Statement. Okay, so they decided to do page four, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to need my client's signature right here. And because this is a PDF, there's not already a spot for them to sign. So I need to do it myself. So I'm going to drag the signature and put it where I want it to go. Drag date signed, put it where I want it to go. You always have to do this anytime something's a PDF. There will never, it will never work. Um, here, okay, I need some initials. I'm going to put it here. Now, I just want to point something out to you that's kind of handy. Um, these don't have to stay this size, and sometimes it's nicer to make them small, especially in a form like this where there's not a lot of room. Okay, so I'm going to initial there. I'm going to initial there. No, no, I want this one. Okay, and then my buyer needs to sign here, and then there's the date. But I also need to sign the agent signs this one as well. So here's how I switch between clients. I go to the top where Bugs's name is and I choose my name. Okay, sign and date. Okay, and then I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to go through each of these disclosures, add a spot for my client to sign or me if that's the case, if I need to sign. Okay, and I'll just keep going through all the things. Kind of go carefully because there's sometimes there's spots where, you know, you might not expect it. All right, pretend I did that for the whole document. All right, just in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do every single one. All right, right now I'm hitting send. Okay. When I, after I hit send, it's saying it's waiting for others. Okay, and if I click on that, I can see who has signed and who hasn't. So Bugs needs to sign, that's who it is current, and then I will sign. All right, so I happen to have my email open right here. You get to see my email, fun, fun, fun. So this is what it looks like for Bugs. Bugs opens his email, and there's this email from me telling him to sign. So he's going to click on the email and click Review Documents. Okay. I absolutely recommend that you do this yourself so you can see it in action on your own. I'm going to hit continue and I hit start. And you can see it just scrolls down to wherever the required signatures were. And that's why I told you to not leave anything optional because it's going to go right past it. I'm going to click. It asks me, do I want to just use this or I could make my own signature of onto? I'm going to use that one. That's fine. All right. And it's just taking me to each spot where there's a signature and I'm just clicking to sign. And had I filled out everything, there would even be more. But because I only filled out some, you know, there's just a few places to initial and sign. Okay, so Bugs has finished signing everywhere I said and clicks finished. Okay, and I don't need to log in. I'll say no thanks. All right. 
if I go back to my DocuSign, I'm just gonna refresh this screen. So now it's telling me that, you know, buyer one already signed. And it went to my email, so that's why it has that name. All right, let's look at my command email. Look at my Keller Williams email. Okay, now I as an agent got an email. Okay, so I have two email accounts on different windows. So now me as the agent, I have to assign something. And I think I only had one signature, right? Let's, let's go start, sign, finish. All right, so I'm done. Your client could do this on their cell phone, by the way. It's super easy to sign on, on a cell phone. Now let's look back in DocuSign again. If I can, if I refresh that, you'll see, it'll say that both of us have signed. And additionally, this whole time I'm getting notifications. Like if I look on my cell phone, um, I get notifications when people have signed. I get, you know, you get notified. So it's showing everybody has signed. And if I want to, let me look at my DocuSign room. Let's go into my documents. Okay, so now you can see there's all these forms that were signed. See all those green ones? So whenever you see a green thing that says signed, that means it's one that you use DocuSign with. So now my next step is to download these and send them off to the other real estate agent. So let's do that. I'm gonna select the documents I need. That one, that one. Okay, disclosures. Look, the red one is the PDF I uploaded. The green one is the one that we just signed. Okay, so I'm gonna select all these that I want. Okay, and now I want to combine them into one PDF. Now we didn't sign every single document because I was in the interest of time, but normally it will have all of them. But I want to always send them in one PDF. If you send an agent all of these separate PDFs, they're not gonna like that, right? Because that makes more work for them. And also it will stand out because everybody else is doing it as one PDF. So it's really important to do it like this. So you can see I selected all of them. I put a checkbox next to the ones that I wanted, and then I'm going to combine them. And that's this button right here, combine. I click on that, and now I can put them in the correct order. Okay, I told you before, the order is really important, right? All right, so I put them in the order that I like them. Um, I'm going to name it by cliff offer. Sometimes I'll put the property address in there. I might put like the last, the I might, uh, you know, right with bunny. I put the last name sometimes of the, my client, but I'm going to name it something so I know what it is. Um, there we go. Okay. And then I'll hit save. And now in this room, here's my PDF. You can see it when I open it up. It's a PDF. <laughs> Doc, sorry. <laughs> it's always slow. <laughs> Everything's slow when I'm on Zoom. <laughs> But it's a PDF that has everything in it. It's one single PDF with all of those documents. Here we go. Now it's opening. All right. So it's got the signatures on it that we signed. We didn't sign that many of them, but you can see, um, you know, I said that I wanted inspections and this is here. Um, so everything that I did, you know, is in this one PDF. So it's ready to email. So I'm just going to close that. So now in order to email that, I'm going to select it. I'm going to click my download button and download it. And now I have on my computer a, 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 a PDF that I'm just going to send an email to the other agent and attach that PDF. Um, just as some other quick things that I do all the time, I don't like my DocuSign room to be really messy. So things that I don't need anymore, like this certification or here's the disclosures, I don't need that anymore because now I have a signed one. When I don't need things, I archive them just to get them out of my way. Ooh, wait, cancel, I don't want the offer. Let me just take that out, uncheck, archive. There we go, archive. It just gets it out of the way. I don't like my room to be so messy. Okay, so as soon as I'm done with them, I archive them. If I accidentally archive something that I meant to keep or I change my mind or whatever, if I go to this active documents and choose archived, I can see the ones I archived. So they're not gone forever. They're just kind of out of my way. Um, you can also make folders if you want to. 
to keep things neat. If you go to actions and choose add folder, I can call this one Wycliffe offer. Okay, so let's say that Bugs ends up putting offers on, you know, five houses before one gets accepted. I have this uh, folder here that I can drag documents in, okay? Or I can select the documents that go to that one. Okay, and then I, there's this uh, move button. I can say, I want a folder in a current room. I want the Wycliffe offer, move. Okay, so now it's not so messy, right? My room docs has all my forms in it. My Wycliffe offer folder has all those documents in it. Keeps it kind of neat. So that's it. That's an offer. It's, you know, we, we did it. I was talking a lot, so it took us like 45 minutes to go through it. We didn't even fill everything out. But, you know, in a real world situation, I can write an offer in about 15 and 20 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes now. It's not too long. The only reason I can do it so fast is because I've had so much practice. You know, I've written so many offers. I work with a lot of investors. And that means whenever you work with investors, you write a lot of low offers. So you get a lot of practice. Um, and that's going to be the big key to you to feeling comfortable with this and not feeling rushed when you have to do it. It's just, I, I really would recommend every week, just write an offer, you know, and if you send them to me and Alana, we are happy to look through them and give you feedback. Um, and it's, you will feel so much more confident if you do that. Just one a week, mix, mix them up, you know, do different types of properties, do some different things. Um, before we hang up, any questions? Nobody's saying anything. I'm just going to assume no. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for joining me today. Um, and I will see all you guys in about 15 minutes for uh, perfecting your conversation. All right. Bye.